Voice of the Sea, learning from experts across the ocean. Welcome to Voice of the Sea. This time on Voice of the Sea, we're at the Pacific Aquaculture and Coastal Resources Center at UH Hilo. This, that other one next door is identical to this, except it was full up with water. And then they got the oysters and the other things in this. This one here is set up for our tuna work, or you know, basically pelagic animals in general. That's what the that's why the stripes are painted on the side, so they can see, so the, they can see the walls. Because if they don't see the walls, you know, we'll throw them in here and we'll, they'll all be dead within ten minutes. They just go smash smash in there and uh, keel over. It means we can eat them afterwards, but I mean that's still <laughs> a rather expensive way of getting fish for it. So. Uh, one of the other things about this site too is what we do with it is that faculty, faculty, staff, and particularly students, they're all actively involved in the development of our facilities. Uh -huh. Even though uh, the hatchery, like you were up in the hatchery building up where Maria's operation is. When it was built, the contractors basically gave us a shell and put the electricity in because we don't do electricity. But anything after that, installation of tanks, installation of pipelines, air, water, all of that stuff, staff and students do it. Okay, which is a really good training opportunity for students who maybe want to go on and do their own aquaculture Right, business. yeah, no, it's great on that one there. You know, sometimes the students get a bit irritated. Uh, painting ta big tanks like this takes a long time. Uh, this one actually has a wall. You know, you, you, you can see if you lean over here against the wall over there, the big holes through that one. They went and they cut that hole. It's for a different type of, so we can suck up large quantities of water for uh -huh. lots of circulation in a really large tank like this. Right now we have airlifts along the walls there, but the fish really don't, the tuna don't like them, so we're pulling them out. That's, they're in back of those, um, those shields right there. They really don't like them. They run into them, so what uh -huh. we're gonna do is, now we have this new thing where we can actually just suck water up. We have a new pump that will pump about 3,500 gallons a minute. Wow. That has, but it has to take water up through the sump on the outside. So the, stu you know, the students and the, uh, and the staff went and cut out that hole through that wall, which is a uh, three foot by three foot a hole that goes through 10 inches of reinforced concrete. Oh my goodness. And they cut it off. They did a great job on it. And so, uh, but, so the students do get irritated with the painting, chipping paint, weed whacking, concrete work, pipelines, like I said, basically everything except electricity. Yeah. So. Um, for this facility, so you mentioned you have big fish, tunas in here. Mm -hmm. What is going to go in here next? Uh, tunas again. They'll be coming in, uh, we'll be doing it in November. And, um, when, the, when the big eye run, start running. And how long will they stay and what's the purpose? Well, the, the purpose here is we're hoping we can get them in there to, to keep them alive long enough that they will start breeding. Okay. Uh, our big problem is that in the previous years when we were doing this, we were trying to do this in combination with the, the fishermen whose boats are really not big enough and set up to handle uh, mm -hmm. hauling tanks to keep the quality of the fish really well. We're really happy with what the fishermen gave to us and what we were able to, you know, what we were able to learn, but now it goes up on us. Now the university has its new boat down here, which I hope is running again, as like all university mm -hmm. equipment, you know, we have trouble keeping things running. Uh, but the, uh, so we have a new boat, it's about 50 something feet, so we can actually put a decent side hauling tank on it. Wow, well, I can't wait to come back and see the tuna in here. Yeah. So anyway, what we're going in here is this building is part of the marine mammal, it's called the Hawaiian Cetacean Rehab Facility. Uh, no, like Hanaho Magazine had a thing about it. Uh -huh. and, the other one there, so, um, is this the one? So this one here is, I actually, I do not know, you know, personally I don't do anything with the, with the dolphins or the uh, small whales that have been, in, well, so far we've had two residents here, one a small dolphin and then the other one a, a small whale, a beaked whale. They kept the beaked whale here, I think, alive two weeks, two and a half weeks something like that, uh, which is longer than that species ever been kept in captivity. Oh, wow. And it had beached itself on Maui. Uh, they have a really good response network, works really well with the, 
collaboration with the actually with the Coast Guard. So they loaded it up on a truck in Maui, drove the truck onto a plane, flew it over here, drove it off the plane, brought it in, and they put it into the tank. So what's so special about this facility that you would airlift an animal from Maui and Well, because it, well, uh, NOAA has the, the programs. They have uh, requirements to try to uh, to save stranded animals, and it's part of you know it's one of the things that they fund. Uh, on this one, and uh, we really appreciate the support that they have on, with us on this one. Uh, on the ones before, Dr. Jason Turner has been the, the PI on it before. Uh, I think we're looking at it, trying to institutionalize it a little bit better. So basically what we have here is the whole facility it's set up uh, for when an animal comes in and they rehab it, and you know, it's, everything that we do here is, based, is under the direction of a vet. And oh. so essentially it's, we do not, you know, I look at it even if we have senior staff and volunteers and everything else, we actually basically only act as nurses and lab techs or other things there. Everything, uh -huh. there's a vet who specifies everything that we have to do. Now my responsibilities in terms of this thing is as with the whole center is keep the lights on, keep the water moving, keep it clean. Keep the air. We don't. We don't aerate inside here. We do the filters, but we don't. So, but this is one of a. This was a very interesting facility because it was a, a building that was really folding, falling down, looking really nasty. Actually, it's, when you get out of here, if you want to take a picture of a building that's falling down, the next <laughs> one over there is what we. And this thing had all these concrete pads and everything else. Basically, my crew came in, cut, you know, cut the channels in the floor, removed the concrete pads that had been in there for 30 years. Uh, prepped it all. Company came in from Kona, built the tank here. You see, it's an interesting design in the sense that we took a regular old 24-foot doughboy tank, which is the which is the you know the metal tank that usually has a regular liner. You know, Cut only it basically took half of it, slid them both out, and put in another eight-foot section in in the middle on each uh -huh, one, uh -huh. and then. Now, if you put this outside in a freestanding situation, it would collapse because it doesn't have the round thing to hold it. But right now, if we're six feet from the top of the tank to the bottom, it's six feet deep. It presses right up against the concrete walls, so it can't go anywhere. And then we had a special heavy-duty liner put in by a company out of Kona. And we're really, really happy with what we've got here. And it uh, costs us about half, a half to right about half what it would have cost us to do a fiberglass tank. Wow, and it's just built into the building custom. And it's built right into the building. Now we actually have our more, for what we have here, our most sophisticated filter systems are actually hooked up to this one right now that we have. So of course we take water out from the bottom of the tanks, it goes outside. Uh, there is a solar heating system on the outside on the ground over there. Uh -huh. Plus we have up at the top, the gray thing is remove particulate filters. Uh, the tall thing over there is a protein skimmer, skimmer. a foam fractionator, uh -huh. removes a, like d dissolved organics and the really ultra fine stuff. And then the black tank here, it, the black tank is a really high efficiency, low head biological filter. Oh. And then down on the ground we have, actually it's underneath the uh, little stand over there to protect it, is a real high intensity uh, UV system. So the biological filter, that's the kind with the little uh, pasta looking balls in yeah, it? Yeah, that has, yeah, the biological, yeah, here. This, yeah. yeah, it has all the little balls, these are all the things which have bacteria growing all over it. Kevin, thanks so much for having me here today. Well, actually, I want to talk about your whole facility, but um, uh, as a Sea Grant, um, <laughs> so Kevin, you are the director of the Sea Grant Center for Sustainable Aquaculture, but right. you also run the facility here. So can you tell us a little right. bit about that? Okay, so in addition to my role as uh, the director of the, the Sea Grant Center, I'm also director of the Pacific Aquaculture and Coastal Resources Center. And the Sea Grant Center basically takes part of the, the aquaculture and fisheries aspects of the, of the other center uh -huh. and combines it with the Sea Grant's uh, aquaculture extension program. So in addition, with under a Center for Sustainable Aquaculture, we do all of our fisheries and aquaculture work here, plus we uh, manage the work that's done by Bob Howerton in Maui and Efren out in American Samoa. And of course we have work that's done down in uh, the uh, Marshall Islands and also in uh, Micronesia. 
So we had a chance to look around a little bit today and you have quite an extensive area. And this I'm told is sort of the heart of your operation. So what right. do we have here? Like for an aquaculture center, the key for everything we do here is water. Without water, we can't do a whole lot. And so what we're sending out right here is our saltwater well. Uh -huh. And here in Gila, which is a very interesting situation because we have, as they call us, the rainiest city in the world. Uh, we typically, even down here at sea level, right at the coast, we get about 150 inches of rain a year. Oh my gosh. Up slope from here, it's about 350 inches. So what happens down here is that all that water runs out and as it reaches the edge of the ocean, we have a thing called the uh, saltwater intrusion and then the freshwater lens. And essentially what that means is if this is the end of the edge of the island, uh -huh. the salt water goes in at an angle under the island. It uh -huh. intrudes because we're on fractured lava right here, very young lava. So it goes under the island here and which and seeing it's heavier than fresh water, it goes under the fresh water and it pushes the fresh water to the surface. So just down the road from here, you will find um, at four miles, which is uh, there's on one side of the road is a pond that is fresh water. And on the other side of the road, it's oceanic quality water right there with the, with the ocean water coming in. Wow. So right next to each other. And the, the thing is just the dividing line is the road that they have there. So what we can do here with this is it means that if we want to get brackish water, which is a mixture of fresh and salt water, we have a shallow well, which is actually in back of us over there. It's, it's taken apart right now because the pump just broke on me. That's, as I mentioned before, the, I have a bane of my existence. I actually have two banes of my existence. One is keeping the grass cut, which it's not right now. And secondly is keeping the pumps running. And so that pump was in there for about a year and it just burned out on me and uh, it's a $3,000 fix. And so uh, we'll be doing it next week. We have to do juggle some budgets to get the money to do it, but we'll get it done. And so next week we'll get that one fixed. Well, so that well goes down 30 feet. And so we pump in this layer of fresh water that's pushed up by the salt water. And so actually that well gives us right about one third uh, the strength of seawater. So nine parts per thousand. Uh, seawater uh, consistently. Now this well is our seawater well and to get to the seawater it means we have to drill down through that fresh water that's pushed up. So this well actually goes to 380 feet oh, wow. below sea level and it has a sleeve that goes all the way down except at the bottom and at the bottom we are bringing in filtered seawater. So if you want to catch a view over there there's the ocean uh, several hundred feet away and then all that water has to go through all that rock and then down to that 380 foot level and then we're sucking it up from there. And this, what I have my hands on here, this is what actually goes all the way down that That goes all the way down, yeah. Uh, well, no, actually that pipe doesn't go all the way down. The one here on the outside goes all the way down. The interesting thing is here, although we're taking water in at 380 feet at the bottom of the sleeve, uh -huh. we don't have to pump from there because hydrostatic pressure pushes the water up the well so it's even at sea level. So we are only actually taking it from 13 feet. Wow. So we only have 13 foot lift on this wow. one here. Okay, and so can you tell me why the ocean is right there? Why do you have a well? Because one, I don't have to worry about, it's, the, the water's all filtered. Uh -huh. I don't have to worry about any of the sediments. I don't have to worry about other fish or anything else coming in on it. And so that's, so it's a very controlled situation and we come in with constant salinity, constant temperature on a year round basis. And we're right here with this one, we come in right at uh, 18 degrees centigrade, which is, uh -huh. uh, oh God, what is 18? Anyway, we can figure that one out later, the mid 60s. So it's a little bit chilly. Uh -huh. So it comes in at that and the uh, salinity stays right at 30, 30, 31 parts per thousand. So full strength seawater for us. We do this one. Uh, we're pumping probably right now, uh, probably about 600 gallons a minute. Oh my gosh. Through the six inch pipeline. So can you sort of show me the parts of the, the well you have? Well, basically the well, the well is a hole in the ground. Uh -huh. At 13, uh, 20 feet down on this pipe there is the pump. Okay. The pump goes underneath there. Our control systems are all over there. Uh -huh. And we pump the water up and just run it through 
and these are basically check valves and other things to keep it from going backwards. And so we did have very sophisticated controls on it at one point in time, but we found out that uh, they didn't work real well for us, uh, partly because we're in a rather remote location and uh -huh. you almost needed, an, we were finding out we needed an engineer here at least once a month to fix them. So we've gone, we've made a much more simplified and actually we're getting ready to change out the whole system now. We're not gonna be using submerged turbines at all. We're going, coming to surface mounted pumps and we'll have three surface mounted pumps here and with the three pumps, it means that we'll pump one. If we need more, we'll turn it on. If we need more, we'll turn it on. Otherwise, we'll turn them off just trying to cut our electricity cost back because it's just so much fun. And actually, we have a problem not now because we only have one pump here. If the power goes down, to start this engine up takes so much startup energy to start it up that our emergency generator can't handle it. Oh my gosh. So uh, right now, our emergency generator only works on the blower. There are air blowers. When the new ones, when we have three smaller pumps hooked up to this, then it means that it will be able to hook up and start up the, the pump too, so we'll have water. Can we look down it? Sure. There, so you can see water level right there. That's as far as we need to pump from, right there. Uh, and this one, like I said, this one's uncovered right now because we're doing the repairs on this well. It takes to get the new pump over for us. <laughs> Always concerns. No. And well, the other and the other reason why we're liking it right now, we're going to surface mounts, is because with our submerged turbines, is in order to take them out, we have to hire a crane. Turn your love of the ocean into a lifelong career. Join NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, as we unlock the secrets in the deep oceans, track rapidly moving storms, model climate trends, protect and preserve our marine resources, and so much more. It's all in a day's work at NOAA. Find a career that makes a world of difference, enriching life through science, service, and stewardship. NOAA. The Curriculum Research and Development Group in the College of Education at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. CRDG has been providing quality educational programs and services for over 40 years, serving students, teachers, parents, educators, and experts around the world and here in Hawaii. The Curriculum Research and Development Group, Improving Schools, Improving Education, CRDG. The University of Hawaii Sea Grant College Program, focused on Hawaii's coasts and its communities through sustainable development, safe seafood supply, sustainable coastal tourism, hazard resilience, and healthy coastal ecosystems. Hawaii's Sea Grant. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is a dynamic curriculum developed by the University of Hawaii's Curriculum Research and Development Group. Teaching ocean science concepts through the disciplines of physics, chemistry, biology, and ecology. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is now available freely online. Find out more at exploringourfluidearth.org.